I am Dave the Amateur Magus, and on this channel I talk all about the mechanics behind ceremonial magic, occultism, esotericism, and the mechanics behind everything you can find within a dusty old grimoire. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe and share this video out with people you think might enjoy it. If you really enjoy my content, go to the link down in the description and subscribe to the Patreon, where patrons get access to exclusive content, including the Occultic Manual series, a write-up about all kinds of different occult topics that I write up once a month. Let's get into the video. So, it's been a while since we talked about planetary power, so let's talk about Jupiter, because I think we talked about, uh, I believe we talked about the moon last time. So let's talk about Jupiter. Jupiter is going to be the planetary power of expansion, and it's also going to be self-mastery, expansion, magnanimous qualities, all Jovian things. If it goes up, if it is growing, it is Jupiterian in nature. If it is the commander of whatever it is doing, if it is the leader of whatever it is, it is Jupiterian. Jupiterian powers have a couple of notable qualities to them. They're always going to be expansive. They're going to be seen as mentor-esque. They're going to carry about them an air of respect and responsibility. They're going to be the kind of people who you don't really want to piss off because they're just the teachers that are just so nice that pissing them off and making them angry is just kind of feels worse for you than anything else. So these are going to be the teachers you want to keep on your good side. Now, teachers are going to be one of the two things related to Jupiter. Jupiter is also known to a little bit of exaggeration and a little bit of uh, embellishment because it rules over the signs of Sagittarius and Pisces. Now, Pisces is going to be... Both of these signs have to do with travel, and Jupiter is also the sign of long-distance travel. Mercury is more how you travel. You know, Mercury is the vehicle, but the travel itself, the journey, is Jupiterian in nature because journeys and experiences of these kinds enrich your life in a way that you really can't get anywhere else. These are where you get Jupiter being the master, or the planetary power, of self-mastery. Jupiter is the planetary power by which you know yourself through experience. And this is why it rules over Sagittarius, which is, among other things, associated with travel, journeys, college, higher learning, philosophy, that kind of thing, and Pisces, which is, among other things, corresponds to solitude, loneliness. However, those are the negative qualities of Pisces, uh, along with drunkenness, you know, insobriety, any kind of drug is, corresponds to Pisces, because it's sending you on a trip. A drug trip, if you would. Pisces is going to be you're using hallucinogens to enrich your mind. Now, that being said, it is also astral travel and dream work, which I don't... I am not a fan of drugs. I am not... The only drug that I am a fan of is the one I'm addicted to, which is caffeine, which is where the magical aspects of Pisces come in. Yes, the Jupiterian powers can be used, especially if you temper them with religious fervor, which, uh, paraphrasing the Arbor Melon, inflame thyself with prayer, that is all Jupiterian. And Jupiter rules over organized religion and spirituality more generally. I would say that spiritual phenomena are more lunar, but Jupiter being ruler of Pisces ends up having that religious qualities to it because Pisces is also the aspects of religion and spirituality more generally. So when it comes to Jupiter, what are we looking at when we want to work with the powers of Jupiter? Well, simply put, we want to be the boss. We want to be the big guy in charge. We want to be approaching him and we want to approach him like we are approaching the king. On occasion, I have heard people, when they want to do Jupiterian rituals, they will forego the ritual robes, and they will forego the ritual implements, and what they will instead do is they will get out the finest whiskey, cigars, and suits. And the reason they do this is because nine times out of ten when you're doing a Jupiter spell, you're doing it for money. You're, you're doing it for money. When it comes to doing magic for money, 
you want to feel rich. So you get out the fancy suit, you get out the fancy liquor, you get out the fancy cigars, and you basically, for the entire duration of the ritual, act like you were a rich guy who has made it to the big time. The powers of Jupiter are expansive, and they are all about expansion, self-control, self-mastery, and, you know, being in charge. No one is going to make the king upset, and if they do make the king upset, usually they know it's a bad idea. You don't want to piss off Jupiter. You really can't piss off Jupiter because Jupiter is, like, Jupiter is having such a good time at all times that it really doesn't make sense for you to piss off Jupiter. That being said, you really don't want to do that, and it's important to know that when you are using Jupiter and you are using Jupiterian powers, you're going to have a lot of expansive nature to the powers. The power of Jupiter is expansive, sometimes excessive, depending on the situation, and that is important to know. Now, there is also some symbolism that is commonly associated with Jupiterian entities, notably thunder and lightning. Jupiterian gods and entities usually have this expansive Jovian nature to them. Jove, like, jovial qualities are all Jupiter. That's where we get the term from. And Zeus is going to be the primary god, specifically the king of the gods aspects, less the lusty horn dog aspects. The color associated with Jupiter is blue or a royal purple. The metal is tin because tin used to be the most valuable metal before gold usurped that. And yeah, that's really Jupiter. So what can we do with Jupiter? Well, I mentioned in the money magic video that Jupiter is good for expanding, but it's not good for starting. And the reason for that is if you have nothing, Jupiter will expand nothing. If you have stuff, Jupiter will expand stuff. If you were trying to become a master of self-control, a solar and Jupiterian spell would be the best. If you were trying to get fame and fortune, fortune is, you know, Jupiterian, wealth in all aspects is also Jupiterian. Now, this is going to be different from, you know, Jupiter is not going to be, like, value. Jupiter is going to expand value. Venus is valuable. Venus is inherently valuable. However, However, if you look at the metal of Jupiter, the metal of Jupiter is actually fairly cheap compared to gold. And the reason for that is because at one time, Jupiter used to be the most valuable metal. Jupiter, specifically tin, used to be the most valuable of all metals because tin is exceptionally rare. However, it has no intrinsic value. Its value is related to its intermingling with other metals and the fact that it was very easy to work with. After people learned how to conquer the metal of Mars, iron, and started making things out of iron, which is significantly more common, by the way, people stopped needing tin as much, and therefore, the value of tin went down. That's just how that goes. Now, tin was one of the most easy-to-work-with metals, and the powers of Jupiter are very easy to work with. However, most people, unless you're an occultist, are not working with tin anymore. Most people are not working with tin. Most people are working with aluminum, iron, steel, copper if you're making wiring. Copper wiring is still super common. And so the metal of Jupiter has kind of taken a back seat. That being said, the powers of Jupiter have not gone away just because the metal of Jupiter is less valuable. The metal of the sun has become more valuable. The metal of the moon has relatively gotten more valuable. Every other metal has gotten more valuable except for Jupiter. And the reason for that is because Jupiter has kind of sort of shifted its influence more towards the business field. Its influence shifted towards those people who are in control of themselves and by being in control of themselves, are manipulating the world around them. Think of it like this. The way it works is if you are a person who is fully in control of yourself, usually you end up starting a business, and that business manipulates the world around you. And a successful business will have a long-lasting impact. You're becoming a magnet, and you are, through your own efforts, 
magnifying everything around you and you are affecting everything around you because you are effectively the king of your own domain. Now, there are some people who are above you, but it, it doesn't matter because they're not going to bother you. They're not going to bother you as long as you're doing the right thing and usually you're going to do the right thing. However, much like Jupiter, there is a downside. And the downside is if you are fully in self-control, you are responsible for what happens. The powers of Saturn are above the powers of Jupiter. And power corrupts. And Jupiter is the power of expansion. So you will inevitably get to the asymptote of absolute power. However, in order to deal with the powers of Jupiter, you need the responsibility of Saturn. And to end this video off with a quote from Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. So as such, we should be using the planetary power of Jupiter responsibly. That being said, let's talk about the planetary power that has usurped Jupiter a little bit. Next time, we're going to be talking about the sun. I have been Dave the Amateur Magus. Discord link down in the description below. For those of you who don't know, we have Discord. Patreon link in the description. As always, supporting the channel continues to allow me to continue to teach more occultism and gives you guys exclusive content, which is a fair trade in my book. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hope you guys are having a good day. If you're not having a good day, hope your day gets better. Take it easy.